Hey there, how's it going everybody? In this video, we're going to be learning how to use a popular Python library called python.env. And this can be used to manage environment variables for our Python projects. Now in some previous videos, I talked about using environment variables for sensitive information like API keys or database passwords. And in those videos, I showed how we can set environment variables on Mac or Windows, and then use those within our Python code so that sensitive information isn't visible within the code itself. And this is a great habit to get into uh, because you never want to leak your passwords or API keys by accident by hard coding them into your scripts. And this is why using environment variables is so important. And with a library like .env, we're going to be able to keep these environment variables within our project, which is majorly beneficial for multiple different reasons. So first of all, this is going to be cross-platform. Uh, so we don't have to worry about the different ways of setting up environment variables on Mac or Windows or Linux. Uh, we can simply just use the same method regardless of operating system. Uh, now second, environment variables are going to be set at the project level and not system-wide. And this is going to avoid conflicts with other projects. So it's extremely common to have you know, an API key for specific projects. And instead of needing to keep track of all these on a system-wide level using the previous method, that we've seen before, with python.env, we can simply have an API key environment variable that is specific to each project. So let's go ahead and get started and take a look at some examples to see how this works and how easy it is to use. So first of all, we're going to need to install .env using pip. So I'm here within my terminal. I'm just going to say pip install, and this is python-env. So let's install that. And now let's say that we have a new Python project. So right now I have a project directory uh, in, on my desktop that contains a single empty Python script. And I'm already navigated to this directory. So if I look at the current directory, we can see that it's just on my desktop. It's called .env tutorial. And if I list the files in here, we simply just have a test.py. So now let me go ahead and open up VS Code. So now within this project, let's say that we're going to have some information that we don't want to be visible within the code itself. So to do this, we're going to create a .env file. So over here in my uh, file explorer, I'm just going to create a .env file, and that's going to be blank for now. And now this next part is extremely important. If you plan on keeping sensitive information in your .env file, uh, which is one of its main use cases, then you want to be absolutely sure that if you're using version control like Git, that you do not commit this file to the repository. Uh, because the whole point of not having this sensitive information in the code itself is so that it, the code can be shared without having that information be visible. Now, if you're using something like Git, uh, the first thing that you're wanna, going to want to do is create a .git ignore file and add this .env file uh, so that it, ex it is ignored when we make our commits. Because otherwise, if you commit this to the repository and push it up to something like GitHub, uh, then that defeats the purpose because people will just have access uh, to this file and be able to see all the sensitive information. So what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to create a .git ignore file. And within here, we're going to ignore .env. Now, speaking of good habits to get into, uh, I create these .git ignore files for just any project, just in case I decide at a later time that I'm going to push this up somewhere, and then that way I don't have to worry about it. Now, one website that you can go to that I have pulled up here, it will help you create git ignore files. Uh, this is uh, toptal.com forward slash developers forward slash git ignore. And I'll put a link to this in the description section below. And it can help you create your git ignore files based on what you're using. So for example, I'm doing a Python project. So I can just type in Python here and add that. Whoops, that says Python vanilla. Let me change that and select Python. And I'm also on Mac OS. So if I go to Mac OS here, uh, then I can add that as well. And then I can create that, and we can see here that it creates a git ignore file for us. And, you know, we can see the top section here is for Mac OS, and it ignores files like DS store and things like that. So we don't have any unneeded files in our git repository. But with that said, let's get back to looking at how to use this uh, python.env package. 
So now that we have that listed in our gitignore file, I'm going to close that down. And now let's see how we can use this .env file to hold our sensitive information. So let's say that we have an API key. Now we can simply add this in. Uh, I can just say API key is equal to ABCD1234, something like that. And we'll look more at the syntax and what's allowed in this env file in just a second. But for now, let's see how easy it is to load this into our script. So I'm going to open up our uh, test script here. Now first we'll want to import the uh, load.env function from this module. So to do this we can say from dot env import and this is load underscore dot env. And then we can load our .env file into environment variables just by calling that function. So I'll say load.env, call that function, and save that. And simply by running that, those values within our env file will be set as environment variables that we can access. Now the most common way to access these is by using the OS module. So let me go ahead and import that. So here at the top of the file, I'll do an import of OS. And now let's see if we can access that API key environment variable. So I'll create a new variable here and just say os.getenv. And we will load that in. We called that API key, I believe. And now let's simply print this out. So we'll print out that API key that we just created. And if I run this, then we can see that we have this down here as ABCD1234. So we can see that we have access to that API key, but that we didn't need to hard code it into our script so nobody can uh, see it publicly. And for a quick rundown on .env, it's pretty much as simple as that. Uh, but let's also look at a few tips and examples that may come in handy and also a bit about the syntax of this env file. So let me open this back up. Now the syntax of this file is very similar to bash, uh, which is what I used in my previous Mac video showing how to set these environment variables. So first of all, there are no spaces around the equal sign in variable assignments as we can see here. So we don't put a space like we would in Python. We just want to keep those uh, all together. Now we do have the ability to add comments. Um, they can either be at the start of a line or at the end of a line. Um, so for example, I could um, put this on a new line up here and say, um, you know, AQ API credentials. And then if I had multiple credentials, then we can also add them at the end of a line. Uh, so for example, I could say uh, key for Google Maps or something like that. And if I go back to my script, and run this, then we can see that those comments um, didn't mess with the functionality at all. Now, another thing that I wanted to point out uh, is that all of these values are loaded in as strings. Uh, so if you're loading in a number or something like that, then you'll need to specifically cast that to the data type that you need if you want it to be loaded in as something else. So if this API key was only numbers, then we could cast that to an integer uh, like so. But this one has some uh, characters in there, so that would throw an error in this instance. Now we're also allowed to uh, have some spaces in our values. Uh, so for example, if I created a, another value here called user, and if I wanted to set that equal to Corey Schaefer, then I could do it like this. So this is allowed just as is, and we can see here that we have a blank line between my API key and the user variable, and that's completely fine also. Uh, you can use, you know, these blank lines to organize your variables into different sections. Now, my own personal preference when it comes to any values that have spaces in, in them is to wrap them in quotes. So something like this, I would personally um, put quotes here when it has a space uh, just so that I can uh, more easily see what's going on there. And that should work fine as well. Uh, now, this points out another problem that I've run into before when working on a project that I want to show you now. So I have this uh, user set to Corey Schaefer with caps and a space between it. Um, but if I go back to my script and if I load in this user, so I'll just say user is equal to, and instead of the API key, we'll go ahead and get that user variable that we created. And now let's print that out instead. If I save this and run it, 
then you can see that the value that I get down here is Corey MS uh, with no spaces. It's all lowercase. Um, so that's a bit confusing. That's not what I added to my uh, .env file. And this could be one of those things that kind of racks your brain and causes a lot of debugging uh, before figuring out what's going on. But basically, all that's happening here is that there's nothing wrong with our env file. I actually already have an environment variable on my machine with this value that's set system wide. And dot env doesn't override these existing environment variables by default. Uh, so this is so that the existence of one of these dot env files doesn't accidentally override values from one machine to another. Uh, so we have two options here of what we can do. The first option is to simply change the variable name uh, that we're using within the .env file, or we can explicitly tell load.env uh, to override existing environment variables. So to do that second option, I could simply come up here to that function and say override is equal to true. And let me fix my spacing here. And if I save that and run it, then we can see that now we get the value that we had in that env file. But personally, if I ever run into this problem, uh, I don't like overriding the system wide variables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this override here. And I'm simply going to uh, change the variable name that we're using within that file. So if I go back here, then instead of user, let's just call this username or something like that. And since I don't have a system wide variable called username, uh, this should work as expected. Okay, and just a couple more tips about the syntax here. Uh, like I said, any of these values uh, with a space, I like to have wrapped in quotes. And if I wanted to have a space at the beginning uh, or end of that string, then it's actually necessary to put it in quotes. So what I mean by that was, is if I had a space here, then I would have to put that in quotes because it's not valid without that. Now, speaking of quotes, there's actually a difference between single and double quotes. Uh, anything that you put inside single quotes is treated literally, and putting something in double quotes allows us to use some special characters. So, for example, let's say that we had a variable that was multiple lines of text. Um, one way that we could do this is to simply put it within quotes and make it, make it multiple lines. So, let's look at an example of this. Uh, for example, let's say that I had an address. Uh, now, one way I could do this is I could use uh, single quotes here to treat this as literal text. And now let's just do, um, you know, one, two, three, uh, fake street. Then I'll go to the next line here and just do uh, my town, West Virginia. And now let's see if this worked properly. So I'll go back here. Um, now we have an address. So let's load that in as well. And hopefully, whenever we print this out, we will get that two lines um, that we typed in. So we can see that Python does print that out as two lines. So we can see that that works, but if we didn't want this to take up multiple lines within the env file, uh, then we could just use a new line character uh, like we've probably seen within Python. But to do this, we would have to use uh, double quotes. So let's go back here and make this uh, double quotes. And now we can use some special characters. So one of these is going to be the new line character, just like in Python, that's uh, backslash n. And now this will print out the address on multiple lines. Let's go ahead and test this real quick. We can see that that still works. So it is important to know the differences between single quotes and double quotes, uh, especially since the ENV files are used for passwords and a lot of passwords can have special characters in them. Uh, so that's something that you'd want to wrap in single quotes so that the password is, inter is interpreted literally so that it doesn't, um, you know, accidentally interpret something like a backslash n as a new line character. Now, the last quick thing that I want to cover here is variable expansion. So just like in bash, we can use variables, but to use them in the .env file, we'll have to surround them in curly braces. So let's say that my username here, let's set that as Corey M. Schaefer, and I wanted to reuse this within other variables. So for example, let's say that uh, I wanted to set an email and I wanted it to be my username at gmail.com. So the way that we're going to use variable expansion here is we're going to need a 
dollar sign, and then curly braces, and then the variable that we want to expand, and then we can say at gmail.com, and that will add in that Corium Schaefer there. So if I have that correct syntax, then I should be able to go back here and let's just go ahead and grab the email as that user instead, uh, just to speed things up here. And we can see here that it gives the correct email address um, using that variable expansion. And with the variable expansion as well, um, we can wrap this in quotes also, let's see if that still works. And we can see that that still works as well. Um, so we can use that within quotes as well if we had some spaces in here. Okay, so I think that's going to do it for this video. Uh, just a quick video on um, how to get this up and running. I think this is a lot better than uh, the ways that we've looked at before. Um, but hopefully now you have a good idea for how you can use python.env and also why it's so useful for different projects. And this is actually my go-to library now when working with environment variables. And you'll likely see me using this a lot in future tutorials when I have the need for environment variables in my project. Now, there's actually one that I'll be releasing here soon where I use .env to hide my sensitive information when I show how I used Python to automate some bill payments of mine. Uh, so be sure to uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified when I release those future videos. But if anyone has any questions about what we covered in this video, then feel free to ask in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer those. And if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. Also, it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, you can contribute through Patreon or YouTube. And there are links to those pages in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.